the pursuit and practice of excellence in being a human being. Human beings who have dual excellence. It's not enough to be excellent in your science. You gotta be an excellent human being. How do you practice being a human being? You know how to practice your, your science. You know how to practice football. But you gotta be practicing being, it does not come natural to be a human being. We are rational animals. The normal thing for me, being from the Bronx, out two miles from the Bronx, and being an Italian father with a dirty mouth, is to react. Yeah, yeah. And in order to go above and beyond that state, we have to transcend our emotions, not hate them, they're beautiful. But we have to, for a better reason, go above and beyond them. And you know what that's called when you do that? It's called love. No. My mother was the best, my mentor. And my father had never been loved by anybody. He was a ghetto kid from the from Italian section. And, and he didn't know how to love any, until he met my mother. And so what, what, what shaped me was love. Now, Father Jake's been around, and first of all, he, he was, uh, you know, he was with Duffy Doherty back in the 60s. And he's a Michigan State grad, and uh, seven years ago, he, he did the funeral for my father. Uh, he's just been a place in time, a person to talk to, a person to talk about your beliefs or your faith with, not just myself, but our other players. And he's just been so accessible. He comes to practice, hangs out, but doesn't press on people, doesn't, you know, he's a normal guy. Uh, he's been a football fan. Um, and he's been very easy to talk to and very supportive uh, for the people who, who are in need in that area. I came here in 1948 from New York because of the curriculum at Michigan State. I wanted to be a, a radio broadcaster. So I came here because they had one of the best programs for radio broadcasting. And I, was, uh, I worked at WKAR. I did that because I wanted to proclaim holism, which for me, as a Christian, means to become like Christ. And I wanted to do that, and I wanted to do it through radio. And that was my goal. Even as a student then, I was involved with this, uh, Biggie Munn and Duffy. I would have pep rallies uh, across the street from the auditorium. There was a big uh, grounds there where people would gather on the slant. And I was the uh, head of the pep rallies. I was a MC, and I introduced the coaches, and so I was involved from that very beginning. My favorite, favorite, favorite game, probably, uh, one of them was uh, to beat Michigan at Ann Arbor um, in 1950, and to beat Notre Dame that same 36-33, that same. The Roy Crane hands off to Grandelius, who swings to his right, cuts up field, and goes into the end zone for a Michigan State touchdown, giving the Spartans a 14-6 lead over Notre Dame. I love uh, the mother of Jesus, but I don't like Notre Dame, and I don't like Michigan, so sorry about that. <laughs> After I graduated, I was drafted in the Marines during Korea. So I already had a job after KAR in WTVB in Coldwater, but they grabbed all of us graduating. I went back to New York and got drafted. So I spent two years active and six inactive in the Marines. And um, then when I came out, I, went, I had a job already in radio, but I decided then um, I was gonna stay for the priesthood. Be wise the way you use your knowledge. Who to encourage and who to have to push or pull. And I ask you, with me, to understand the wisdom of God in Jesus. And his way of using it is through love. Isn't that beautiful to have that? I really feel like 
an important part, not important for me, but the idea of support, spiritual support for all is really important. And support doesn't mean patronizing or matronizing. It means enhancing what they already have uh, by being candid and direct and honest. And some of the services I have, everybody, they're, they're irrespective of what they believe, they come and we talk. And so. The best way to describe it is love. I got my doctorate and I came to Michigan State. I thought there, there's a distinct connection between religion and medicine. It would help in the, and aid in the healing. And then I found that a lot of people don't do religion, but everybody does spirituality. And so here's the definition of spirituality. It's not religion. It means they practice their values and they use as a basis for that their religion, some of them, and some of them use their humanities or whatever. Everybody has spirituality, but not everybody supports it religiously. He's more than just a uh, spiritual guy. He's a part of the football family just because of his interaction with our players in a very non-threatening, casual manner. And he really has no, uh, no agenda. There is no agenda. He just cares so much about all of us. You know, I know he makes such a great effort to get to know as many guys on the team as he can, um, no matter their religious background, no matter anything. Just he just genuinely cares about each person in this program, and and uh, he just you know wants to get to know about me, my family, my social life, how I'm feeling about football, what's going on in any aspect of my life. So he's just been somebody that's been a great friend to me, and and I uh, just really have enjoyed my time here with him. Ways revealed. I'm not a parent, but I am a coach, kind of. A coach is a person who pulls people to their, the best of who they can be. And I feel good about that. And I feel capable of that. Now, I got degrees and all that doesn't make, what, what my strong suit is, I'm a human being. That's why they call me father or anything like that. I'm a human being. We're all equal, different jobs. And I think if I can treat people humanly, then I'm getting to them. That's where this spirituality is. Just had a lot of great talks with him and spent a lot of, had a lot of laughs at our position meals or um, seeing him at church or seeing, just seeing him on the sidelines. And um, he's just always right on the edge of uh, that red line on the sidelines and just wanting to get as close as he can to us out there. And he's always cheering us on. I got hit and backed up to by a cameraman and broke four ribs. So I'm down on the ground, I say, oh crap. And so D'Antonio comes and says, are you okay, Jake? I said, yeah, but I got one more rib to give for the team, that's it. So that's supposed to be funny. Just moments that stand out to me from over the years are just all the times on the sideline during games when, when he's just always saying, I got a great feeling about this game, I got a great feeling about this game, or he's just always got so much positive energy that he's brought to every game, every practice. That just spreads amongst everybody, and I think he's just been a good luck charm, honestly, over the years, and has just brought a lot of just, just blessings to our team. This is an excellent program. And my idea is to enhance the excellence. To be excellent in function, you need support. You can't do it alone. I graduated in 1951. The 1951 Spartans were really raucous. And the sidelines were raucous. But so are they. So are the 2018 raucous. It depends on the individual and how they celebrate. That isn't a good answer, is it? It's the best I could do.